guys and welcome to today's video uh, today I'm just gonna be making a quick video review uh, with these two mini uh, MIDI keyboards that I bought on Amazon I'll include the link in the description down below and I wanted something that was as slim as possible you know compact that I can carry on the road and it not be bulky and me have to have a big bulky backpack and so it came down to these two for me. Now, below them are the boxes they came in, just so you could see the differences in size. So we've got the Korg Nano Key 2 on the bottom, and we've got the Akai Professional LPK25 at the top, right? And so each of these keyboards are a uh, 25 key. But uh, you can see that the Korg is significantly smaller. And uh, I'm not going to lie, that is the one I decided to go with. Uh, and I'll show you why in just a second. But uh, diving into the keyboards a little bit, what I did not like about the Akai... Well, let me tell you what I like about it first, right? It has an arpeggiator. Uh, the keys, you know, at least the white keys play well. It has sustain, you can change the octaves. Uh, you've even got, what is that, program? I believe that might be also modulation, but you could do a lot of things with it. You know, you can change the arpeggiator values here. And, you know, there's, you can change the programs here or store certain programs. I didn't even get that deep into it because I already have decided that this is not the one that I'm gonna go with. I'm gonna go with the Nano Key 2. Now, both of them have mini USB at the sides, right? So mini USB, mini USB, and for those that don't know what mini USB is, it's uh, this connector right here. All right, just so you can see that. And they're both different. So the mini has the bigger upper part of the connector up like that. Whereas for the Akai, you have to have the smaller part. Now, I do prefer how, you know, Korg did it. Uh, because I just feel like it's just more sturdier inside of the uh, socket while it's connected. And um, yeah, I went ahead and ordered... Uh, an angled cable so if you want I'll include the link in the description down below for that as well if you want it at an angle going up it's gonna be a left angle and so yeah you can go ahead and uh, get that on Amazon as well and so yeah as far as comparing the keys uh, I like the nano key when I first saw the nano key I thought these were gonna be rubber I thought these were gonna be a little stiff. I didn't think they were really gonna play well, but to my amazement, it plays very well. And a lot better than the Akai, in my opinion. So the Akai, it feels more stiffer, and it's harder for my fingers to kind of hit these small keys. They're just too small for my hands, you know? So when I tried the, uh, the Nano key, all the keys hit the same. They're also pressure sensitive, so you could hit them soft to hard and get different tones. And yeah, I mean, they're just easy to play. They're not rubber, they're plastic. They're easy to press down, as you can see. So they make good drum pads and they make good playable keys, in my opinion. Uh, I love it. So, you know, you can change the octaves here. You've got sustain, you've got uh, modulation, you've got pitch. I mean, I am happy with that. I'll just use the arpeggiators that are built into the software, you know? And so both of them come with a cable that's wrapped up like this, which is the mini USB to regular USB, right? Uh, and that's about it. I mean, besides the instruction manual and uh, Akai, they include a light version of Ableton. Uh, Korg, they include, you know, LE versions of a lot of their synths and stuff. I'm pretty sure there were a few uh, full version synths, but I, I won't be using those. I have my own synths that I use. 
and yeah so let me show you the differences you know set up beside the computer as to why i went with the nano key 2. okay guys so here we are i set up both keyboards next to each other and uh as you can see you know, the Akai is significantly bigger, so it's more bulkier, you know, as far as thickness. So this would be a lot thicker to put in your laptop case as such. But if you look at the Korg, I mean, it's really thin and it's very compact and very convenient. And uh, not only that, look at this. It slides all over the place, the Akai, right? But uh, Korg was smart enough to include rubber feet in the middle and so I don't get any slide with this one. So, I mean, no brainer for me, right? And just, you know, look at these pads. So you see, they're very effective. I'm not gonna have any problems hitting the upper notes either. So I don't even want to really hook up the Akai. I just kind of, you know, wanted to show you these things because the only thing the Akai has over the Korg is the built-in arpeggiator, in my opinion. Like, that's it. And supposedly you could do some other stuff with some programs, but I mean, I I can't tell you the last time I really dove into a MIDI keyboard like that. I, I mainly uh, mess around with the VST. And so, yeah, I mean, you know, definitely going to go with Korg. So I'm sending back the Sakai today. That's why I'm making the video today as well. And uh, yeah, so you can see. I'm sorry, I can't do that on, on the Akai. I mean, I probably could, but it's not fun when you've got these small little tiny keys and this is sliding. I gotta go get a rubber mat, you know, no. This one's ready. This one's ready to go on a cruise, go anywhere you wanna go around the world. So, you know, I was surprised. I thought I was gonna pick the Akai, but nano key it is, guys. So if you found this video helpful, go ahead, hit the subscribe, smash the like, uh, drop a comment if you have any questions or suggestions, if you might have found other keyboards better than this Nano Key that are basically in the same thickness and convenience, you know, range, I guess you could say. Like, I want to hear about it. But so far, this is the one for me. So I hope this helped you out, guys. That's it for now. And until next time.